coming up. I have the sleigh bells. I've always felt that Rudolph is very misunderstood. You get lost in it. Feel free to do as you will. I get to use all of the old men voices that I rather enjoy. They could be an encumbrance if you're climbing a tree, love. I took a little uh, Christmas artistic license there, I'm afraid. How do you say that? I have to say that Big Sister had quite a low voice. It's only if I step on them now. It's a beautiful little piece, actually. And now, enjoy the podcast. How do you say that? How do you say that? How do you say that? How, How do, do you, you say, say that? that? Hello and welcome to today's special Christmassy episode of How Do You Say That? Sponsored by BritishVoiceOver.co.uk, the award-nominated show. Sorry, those bells are making me laugh now. The award-nominated show dedicated to everyone who speaks into a microphone. And if, if you haven't guessed already, here is my co-host Mark Rice. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> I have the sleigh bells. You do, you do. Which isn't even his fun fact. His no. fun fact is that at Christmas he used to recreate famous game shows with his family. Well, we did. And and uh, I was always the host, so I knew what I wanted to of do course, for a living very, very early on. And I remember one Christmas we recreated Blankety Blank and I was wow. Werry Togan. Oh, <laughs> I must have been so nine, sweet. probably seven, eight, nine, something like that. Did you dress up with a little? <laughs> oh yeah, kind of, oh, oh yeah, yeah. So of course. And, and, the, and, the, and a ruler with a with a thing on the end, like the long microphone that Terry used to have. <laughs> <laughs> well, my co-host is Sam Boffin, and her fun Christmassy fact is that the very first weekend away ever that she spent with her husband was to the Christmas markets in Prague. How yes, lovely! That's very romantic, isn't it? Well, Ooh. actually, of course, he wasn't my husband at the time. He was just merely my boyfriend. <laughs> but we. We bought and we still have, so, and this is 20, blah, 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 a long time ago, <laughs> many, many years ago. And we, we bought Christmas decorations there, which we still have. They're beautiful uh, glass blown Christmas decorations. And every single year after that, we've bought another one. Oh, I love that. That's yeah, lovely. Sweet. Well, of course, we also have a special guest. And this week for Christmas, it's narrator and voiceover artist Anna Clements. Hello, Yay! Anna. Hello, and Welcome both. to the show. Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, do you have a fun Christmassy fact for us. I do. I actually uh, juggle tangerines to relax <laughs> over Christmas. <laughs> Presumably, other other fruit is available. Presumably, at, is it uh, just at Christmas, or do you do you also <laughs> juggle other things at other time of the year? I do actually juggle to relax, full stop. Wow. But tangerines oh. are uh, abundant at Christmas, aren't they? So, yes. um, always handy and nicely weighted. I would think, actually, yes, indeed, yeah. and very evenly. So, yes, yes. <laughs> Don't try it with a mince pie; you get pastry everywhere. <laughs> no, you have to take it out of the foil tray first. <laughs> That's exactly. The trick. She's tried. Sam, tell us a bit more about Anna, would you? Yes, I will. Anna is Spanish by birth, but British by nature. And so she's bilingual. And twice as much to say. <laughs> so Anna dreamed of being an actor, but life got in the way and she found herself at university rather than drama school studying. I was staggered by this. Studying economics rather than oh. acting. That's quite a, a shift there. Mm. So she is an economics graduate with a career in finance, as well as a trained singer and professional voice actor. And wow. she spent six years working in provincial musical theatre. Gosh. Wow, that is surely so much more than a triple threat, I would imagine. <laughs> it absolutely is. <laughs> Anna's dream of working as a performer is now a reality. She works full-time as a voice talent from her own professional studio, narrating audiobooks for major publishers and working on corporate and explainer videos for clients around the world. And in the last three years on Clubhouse, as the founder of the Audiobooks Club, Anna's made a name for herself as the go-to for audiobook information, which has also led to an additional career in coaching and public speaking. Wow. Anna, that's very busy. Do you know, it's actually about um, my attention span. I like new things, so I'm always doing something else. <laughs> yes, I, I, I absolutely know how that feels. I, I've got a gazillion ideas and uh, not enough time to put them all into practice. Well, that's brilliant stuff. Well, I hope you're both feeling festive because yeah. let's have a look at our first Christmassy script of the show and ask, ho, 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 how do you say that? <laughs> Play, how do you say that? So, OK, so this is our Christmas episode. More bells. And actually, yes, more bells. <laughs> it was surprisingly tricky to find a piece of Christmassy joy to bring to wow, it. Wow, OK. And I genuinely thought there was a moment that I was going to have to fall back on being the Wicked Queen in a pantomime. Oh. I genuinely thought it. But well, I, I, I found a really lovely piece that is essentially from, well, it's kind of like an... Uh, 
it's kind of like an audio guide, but it's actually right. a museum exhibit is what it okay, is. Okay, so it's, it's a similar kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And yes. you do quite a lot of these, don't you, to be fair? I do. Um, this is for a local museum, basically. And this was for an exhibition that was all about a child's view of Christmas. Lovely. Excellent. So that's where this one, this one comes from. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of uh, people talking about their memories of Christmas. Of, yeah, of Christmas. Christmas yeah. is past. And it went from anything, actually, from about the 1930s to the 1970s. Wow. It was lovely. It was a lovely exhibition. And you got to kind of, you know, go in and sit in a lovely Christmas Eve environment. It was really beautiful, actually. Anna, have you done audio guides, museum tours, that kind of thing? I have. I tend to do them in Europe. So I'm I'm big in Holland, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! Mostly because I do them in both English and Spanish. Oh, um, yeah. And so yeah. within the European market, yep. uh, they often want both languages. So that oh, seems that's to go so down well. useful to be able Amazing. to do both. Mm. Yeah. Uh, much as this is a sister talking about a big sister, I'm obviously going to try and be a brother talking about yes, a big that's sister. Fine. Yeah, um, that's... But I don't mind saying I wanted a doll. It's, exactly. <laughs> it's all good. Not. It's all good. What I am going to do before I do this bit of script is put down the bells. You put down the bells. For God's sake, put down the bells. <laughs> Christ. It's only if I step on them now. <laughs> no, right, I'm going to give it a go. Let's see what let's see what comes out of this one. I dearly wanted a doll's house, but they were hard to come by during the war. I remember one Christmas, my big sister was so excited. Christmas is coming, Janet, and you're going to love your present. Someone's got me a doll's house. Somebody's got me a doll's house. It doesn't have to be new or anything. Just a doll's house. Just make sure you don't look in the outside, laugh. But come Christmas morning, I got a doll's pram. Someone had done it up and painted it battleship grey. The only available colour left over from the war. I love the fact you chose to do that with an accent. What? And I have no it, it idea why. It just did kind it of just happened. just come out like that? Yes. It did. As, as, I, as I read the first line, it's like, oh, wow. I'm doing that, am I? It's like, yeah, interesting. But I think it yes. possibly worked. I have to say that Big Sister had quite a low voice, but yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I was actually quite fascinated at how I felt like you were trying to fit it into 30 seconds. Um, there was a okay. sense oh. of which, which I was yeah. really um, impressed by because it didn't lose any of the kind of uh, flow of the story. And yet I was aware that I could almost see the pictures rushing behind because yeah. I had a limited amount of time, whereas I would have been very tempted to have put in a lot more pausing, yes. um, which obviously yeah. there isn't always time for. Indeed. Yeah. Um, I, I am very often accused of going too fast as a regular listener. You'll know that, um, Anna. Um, and yes, looking back, I probably should have absolutely given it quite a lot more breathing room yes it's a really good observation mm. actually because yeah there, there is nothing that says this needs to fit into a particular no, time indeed. frame at all yeah no, that is interesting actually i have i'm gonna look out for that actually i'm gonna listen out for that in 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 future because maybe that's something that you do do mark i, think I don't it know is. i think it yeah. is yeah. yeah and incredibly well when it's required <laughs> <laughs> I think because I do a lot yes. of commercials, I think my my auto preset is go fast. And yeah. I maybe need to just think about that a little bit more. Obviously, that would have been a first read and yeah. the director would have come back going, can I have that twice as slow, please? Or can you let it breathe or something? You know. But you're right, though. It's enviable when you do it because it, it is something that is actually can be quite tricky, actually, to yes. get things in fast. Well, that's the yes. way I approached it. How about you, Anna? How, how are you going to look at this one? Well, I'm I'm interested to see that the um, voices are fascinating. Uh, I'm, I am fascinated by voices, and I um, am really interested to imagine this person being quite a lot older. So this is a good oh, sixty right. years ago. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the idea of during the war. Um, it's a real reminiscence, isn't it? As people mm-hmm. are want to do. Yes. So that's what I'm going to go for. Okay. I dearly wanted a doll's house, but they were hard to come by during the war. I remember one Christmas, my big sister was so excited. Christmas is coming, Janet, and you're going to love your present. Somebody's got me a doll's house. Somebody's got me a doll's house. It doesn't have to be new or anything, just a doll's house. Just make sure you don't look in the outside lav. But come Christmas morning, I got a doll's pram. Someone had done it up and painted it battleship grey. 
the only available colour left over from the war. Oh, the emotion nice. there is phenomenal. I understand exactly what you were doing. You went for an uh, for a, for an older person looking back at this yeah. particular time, and the disappointment of just yeah. getting a doll's <laughs> pram. All it made the hairs on the back of my arm stand up. That uh, that was so yeah. emotional. It was really lovely. It's funny how a lot of Christmas stories are actually incredibly sad, aren't they? Yes, you know, it yes. should be about the joy and the sparkle mm-hmm. and the yeah. and the bells, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. But mostly. People's stories, when you actually ask them, they're about things that didn't quite, or things that yes. could have yeah. but didn't. Yeah. yeah, she she does go on to say in this little one, you know, how disappointed she was, but how how she knew she had to be. I couldn't fit it all in to the time that we've mm-hmm. got, but how disappointed she was, and how but how she had to pretend to be really excited because you know that, that this was of a big course, thing. Yeah. Well, it was, we've it's all a been really, there. Yes, yeah, indeed. absolutely. <laughs> Thank your auntie for the jumper. <laughs> Sam, it's your go. Okay, so let's yeah. see what you did with it. I dearly wanted a doll's house, but they were hard to come by during the war. I remember one Christmas. My big sister was so excited. Christmas is coming, Janet, and you're going to love your present. (gasps) Somebody's got me a doll's house. Somebody's got me a doll's house. Oh, it doesn't have to be new or, or anything. Just a doll's house. Just make sure you don't look in the outside lav. But come Christmas morning... I got a doll's pram. Someone had done it up and painted it battleship grey, the only available colour left over from the war. Oh, lovely! The singing "Someone's Got Me a Doll's House" is like it. It the the emotional Class. pull of that is <laughs> both horrific and delightful. There was a skipping visual as well, yes. wasn't there? It was lovely. Oh, yeah. Really lovely. Yeah. Interestingly, listening to you do it, Anna, I, I wonder if I should have lent more into the original woman as she was recounting it. I didn't do that. I For the first of, line and the last yeah. line. Yeah. yeah. It's curious that the um, there is this kind of switchover between audio drama and audio book. And yeah. I felt like yours was a story. I felt like I wanted to know what she'd said before and what came after. Yeah. Like as if there was much more. It was a. It mm. felt like a book, like a the the recounting of a story. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Whereas because I only got the six lines, I went for yes. audio drama personality rather than um, yeah. a continuing but, saga kind of thing. But 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 both work. That's the, yes, that's yes. the interesting thing. Is a, that along with a... along with Mark's thirty second special, you know, it's, <laughs> it has a place, doesn't it? It was very it different. Does. Yeah, that's it for does. sure. <laughs> well, I've got the bells again, and it is worthwhile remembering that these are real <laughs> scripts we've been working on, but we've changed names and some details to avoid those pesky Christmas copyright issues. So, Anna, <laughs> would you like to tell us about the Christmas script that you've brought for us? Yes, indeed. I, as you know, do a lot of uh, audiobooks, and mm-hmm. some of those audiobooks are recipe books, which oh. often sound like they could be tedious, monotonous, I'm not sure, uh, complicated, and um, actually not. Most of the I've been really lucky. The The ones I've done have been real stories. This is from Nigel Slater's uh, Christmas book, and it's not unlike several other Uh, chefs who write stories about why they love food. Mm -hmm. And for me, the love of audiobooks is actually about the emotion behind the conversation. So Mm. uh, food is a a particular favourite of mine. I do show my love through food, uh, as my daughters will uh, (laughs) attest. (laughs) All the best people do, Anna, don't they? Well, indeed, indeed. Um, And I'm just really aware that it was really emotive, and I'm I'm all about... um, making people feel things or thinking about how people feel about things. So uh, that was what this piece did for me. Interesting. Well, I think Sam's going to go first on this one. I mean, anything about cake is good for me. (laughs) Although although I'm not a big fan of Christmas cake. I'm not really looking forward this week to eating Christmas cake. I much prefer Black Forest Gatto at Christmas. I'm actually shocked into silence here. So. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a, I'm a panettone girl. But oh, I do li- nice. I do oh, like a fruit yes. cake. Right, anyway, on to cake okay. script. Sam, over to you. Okay. Cake holds a family together. I really believed it did. My father was a different man when there was a cake in the house. Warm. The sort of man I wanted a hug rather than shy away from. If he had a plate of cake in his hand, I knew it would be all right to climb up onto his lap. There was something about the way my mother would put cake on the table 
that made me feel all was well. Safe. Secure. Unshakable. I feel much the same way about cake to this day, and no more so than at Christmas. Mm, that's a real warm Christmas memory, that one, mm. isn't it? Yeah, I think I buggered up the last line, but I would have probably done, and no more so than at Christmas. But anyway, that's right. not yeah, 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 yeah. But again, in a first read, that's the kind of thing that, that, you, that you find out about as you do it, isn't it? Yes. I, I probably should have smiled more as well, actually, thinking about it. But anyway, but, but it's, an, it's a beautiful little piece, actually. It's a really lovely piece. I thought it was quite smiley, actually. Yeah. I thought that, yeah. that there was a warmth that came through there, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it very much. Again, um, as always with, with Sam's reads, you feel kind of looked after. There's a security yes. to the yes. read that always lets you know that you can keep listening because she isn't going to make a mistake. She isn't going to mess up. It's going to be fine. There's a, there's a trustworthiness uh, about uh, her voice that says, tell me everything. Um, Absolutely. Which I just love. And it came across. Yeah. It, it's interesting because even in that little piece, you get lost in it, mm. um, you know, almost immediately. Almost immediately, I, you know, as I was reading it, I completely forgot I was reading it, if you like. The story really came through, didn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful piece. It's mm. very evocative, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'll try not to go too fast with it and ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you actually feel about cake, Mark. <laughs> and also remembering that this is someone else's memory of cake. Mm. Yes. Okay, let's give it a try. Cake holds a family together. I really believed it did. My father was a different man when there was cake in the house. Warm. The sort of man I wanted to hug rather than shy away from. If he had a plate of cake in his hand, I knew it would be all right to climb up onto his lap. There was something about the way my mother would put a cake on the table that made me feel all was well, safe, secure, unshakable. I feel much the same about cake to this day, and no more so than at Christmas. Lovely. There was something quite melancholic, actually, though, about the last line, which is, you know, mm. g g good or bad, actually. I, I mean, as, um, as, as, we've been, as we've been saying, Christmas can bring the real melancholic mm. feel, can't mm. it? Apart from when Santa's in the room, obviously. <laughs> obviously, and, I noticed the there were no bells. <laughs> yes. I didn't do any bells during the cake read. No, sure. no, no. I thought, that that, I thought that that probably wouldn't be right. <laughs> Well, let's hear your take on it, shall we, Anna? Thank you. Cake holds a family together. I really believed it did. My father was a different man when there was a cake in the house. Warm. The sort of man I wanted to hug rather than shy away from. If he had a plate of cake in his hand, I knew it would be all right to climb up onto his lap. There was something about the way my mother would put a cake on the table that made me feel all was well, safe, secure, unshakable. I feel much the same way about cake to this day, and no more so than at Christmas. Oh, lovely. You brought out a real warmth there, I think. Yeah. I was I was trying to lift that last line yes. because we did talk about, you know, the melancholy, yeah. but actually it, it is about joy, isn't it? The joy it is of about, Christmas, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You put a lot of space, which was lovely, around warm, different mum and there was cake in the house, and, and both sides of warm, you gave it a lot of warm space, actually. A lot of kind of, uh, that was lovely. I love that. Was that was a really second. conscious choice in the moment, actually, because I wasn't yeah. sure if it was the cake or my father we were talking about. But right. isn't that interesting? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Perfect, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And suddenly it was both, you know. Yes, was, and the, yeah. the warmth of the house after baking. Yeah, there's yeah. A, it's actually a lot in that very simple yes, single word. Yes, just that single uh, word. Yeah. yeah. How do you say that? Well, okay, who fancies a Christmas wildcard section? Whoop, yeah. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> let's, have some, let's have some Christmassy fun with these scripts, shall we? <laughs> yeah, so ah. I think Anna, Anna, you're going to choose a little festive. Well, it doesn't have to be festive. Just choose a, a little wildcard for me, I think. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm going to go Tiny Tim. Oh, oh my I'm, I felt like Dickens's Christmas Carol needs to be brought into the episode. I think you're this right. Close to Christmas, sure. and I do love a Christmas Carol. And I'm actually really curious how you feel about who Tiny Tim is. And it's not a very small Kermit the Frog, which is uh, if you <laughs> no, no. although it could be. Where it I'm is the wild card. Um, and which script would you like her to do, Anna? The one about cake, actually. Okay, cake. yeah, that makes okay. sense. Okay. 
So, actually, it's a very good point. Tiny Tim. Who is Tiny Tim? Cake holds a family together. I, I really believed it did. My father was a different man when there was a cake in the house. Warm. The sort of man I wanted to hug rather than shy away from. If he had a plate of cake in his hand, I knew it would be all right to climb up onto his lap. And there was something about the way my mother would put a cake on the table that made me feel all was well. Safe. Secure. Unshakable. I feel much the same about cake to this day, and no more so than at Christmas. God bless us, everyone. Oh, oh, indeed. I absolutely love that. I, I was always concerned that Tiny Tim, there was an implication yes. that he was so poorly he might die. And I love yes. the idea that he was able absolutely. to grow up and look back yep. on yes, this day I must and admit, talk I, about Yes, cake. I did think of him more as excitable <laughs> rather than... Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Yes, I, I didn't want to go down that route. <laughs> but I think also the, the dichotomy of Tiny Tim was Tiny Tim always knew that his father would be a man that he wanted to hug because the, yes. Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim had such yes. a strong relationship. Uh, and you could see that, the, the, the father's love for yes. him and him uh, his love for his father. Um, so that actually I don't think that there would have been a time where he would have shied away from Bob Cratchit at all. No. No. Having said that, a plate of cake makes everything better. Yes, so. it does. <laughs> it does. Or, or a cake or a plate of mince pies even. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nicely done. Nicely really? done, Sam. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, the, the, yeah, I want to sort of get a bit of joy into it, perhaps, that wouldn't have been in the... Well, there was joy in the original yeah. uh, idea. But At the end. I don't know. He's just little. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Is it now when we spin the wheel? <laughs> oh, yeah. The wildcard generator, you mean? Yes, the, the festive wildcard generator. That's a good idea, Anna. And I'm going to spin the wheel so that we come up with a uh, a character or, or a genre for you to do. So, all right, let's spin it. <laughs> Well, okay, because because it's Christmas, I'm going to go with the cake script again, but I'm going to get you to choose which of the reindeers from Santa you would like. So I would like a a full cartoon-esque reindeer character, please. Good Lord. (laughs) It needs to be Rudolph, really, doesn't it? Possibly so, yeah. I think so. I've I've always felt that Rudolph is very misunderstood. (laughs) Yes. uh, Yes. So this is how Rudolph feels about... Uh, cake, and <laughs> nice. by father we mean Santa. I mean, or you something. might want to change cake to carrot. Feel free oh, to wow. do as you will. <laughs> wow. Carrot holds a family together. I really believed it did. Santa was a different man when there was carrots in the house. Warm. The sort of man I wanted to hug rather than jump all over. (laughs) If he had a plate of carrots in his hand, I knew it would be all right to climb up onto his lap and stuff my face. There was something about the way Mrs Claus would put a carrot on the table that made me feel sorry. (laughs) I'm enjoying it. (laughs) Just go back to the beginning of that line. There was something about the way Mrs. Claus would put a carrot on the table that made me feel all was well, safe, secure, unshakable. I feel much the same way about carrots to this day, and no more so than on Christmas Eve. I love it. I absolutely love it. That was brilliant. That was hard work. (laughs) Do you know what? You didn't make it seem like hard work, you came. Not at all. And interestingly, the voice that you chose there, I absolutely could see... Rudolph talking. Oh, it yes. was it was very very good. You're very kind, Mark. You're very <laughs> kind. I loved it. <laughs> okay, so I think it's my turn, isn't it? Oh yes. Go on then, spin it for me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ignore the wheel because it didn't give me anything festive at all. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so oh, fine. That's that. like, that, that's, sorry, that's wheel. Clear. <laughs> So I, I was, te- you know, obviously we could go Santa, but we know you're Santa. I, I do do Santa quite quite a lot, yes. We will do fairy on top of the Christmas tree of whatever <laughs> you wish to do. But the point is, is this is fairy on top of the Christmas tree, very proud because he, she has never been on the top of the Christmas tree oh, before. Oh, so promoted. Ever, exactly. And 
the transition through this piece <laughs> is you climbing the last few fur prongs what are prongs. they prongs yeah branches <laughs> branches <laughs> okay <laughs> climbing the last few branches to get up to the tippity top okay okay yeah and which script is that Play, playing the action well we're going to have to go with the i think we're going to go with the first one because the doll's we haven't house done that before okay. we have to do yeah. doll's house yeah oh so okay. i want you to play the action through it Ooh. proud <laughs> wow proud christmas fairy okay uh, i think i'm going to put the bells down actually yeah, they could they could be an encumbrance. The bells, the if you're bells could a be an love. encumbrance. <laughs> right. Okay. Sugar plum, Mark takes the rain. Okay. Yeah. I dearly wanted a doll's house, but they were hard to come by during the war. I remember one Christmas my big sister was so excited she'd already been at the top of the tree. <gasps> Christmas is coming, Janet. You're going to love your present. Somebody's got me a doll's house. Somebody's got me a doll's house at the top of the tree. It doesn't have to be new or anything. Just a doll's house at the top of the tree. Just make sure you don't look on the lower branch. But come Christmas morning, I got a star and not a fairy. Someone had done it up and painted it battleship grey, the only colour left over from the war, but now I'm here. (laughs) <laughs> and I am shining out and there is a light up my bum. <laughs> don't, don't know if you want to include that. I've always felt a little bit sorry for the fairy at the top Me of the tree. Too. It's quite a lonely space, isn't yes. it? It is. It is. I, uh, I, I took a little uh, Christmas artistic license there, I'm afraid. Oh, yes, we noticed. <laughs> Just a touch. Yes, we had the script in front of us. I heard the, heard the climbing the tree. I liked That's it. That's good. Yes, yeah, definitely. I, I heard you get to the top. <laughs> it was good. There was a robin in the way and a chocolate coin. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, for everyone, uh, the scripts are in the show notes. So why not take a little moment between the festivities Glass of and sherry. in the exactly a few glasses of sherry and, and in the pie. comfort <laughs> and a mince yeah, pie, mince pie. Uh, unjuggled, mm. unjuggled, uh, and <laughs> and then just have a go at these lovely uh, festive. Scripts Absolutely. in the comfort of your own booth. Yeah, exactly. Good idea. Uh, and please keep sending in or sharing your ideas for wild cards so that we can add them to the wild card generator for 2024. Yes. Um, either DM us on Instagram at HDYST podcast or email us at podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. Indeed. And now it is question Ooh. time. So our question this week is, Anna, how far do you have to lean into a character accent or type in an audiobook, is it a light touch or does it depend? Uh, sadly, it depends, which is the worst <laughs> answer to the question, isn't no, it? No. Um, so there are genres that allow for um, much bigger characters, you know, fantasy, sci-fi, um, uh, some steampunk. Steampunk is my particular favourite. I came into the industry thinking I was going to read fantasy because that's what I read as a as a reader. Um, mm-hmm. And actually, I'm hired to read historical fiction because most of my work is in America and because I speak like this. Um, oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah. And so every so often I get to do steampunk. And in steampunk, wow. I get to use all of the old men voices yeah. that I rather oh, enjoy. Wow. <laughs> And everybody has an accent. You know, you get the the Norwegian captain on the airship and then Mm -hmm. suddenly the um, driver of the car is from Scotland and the detective is Australian. And for some reason, authors feel the need to just throw in accents and have no real thought for the fact that when this is turned into an audio book, the narrator needs to be able to do all of those voices. That's not their first thought, though, is it? They're writing the book that's in them. Indeed, absolutely. And nor should it be. And and it is our job to actually interpret all of those yep. voices. So, But then there are, you know, more, perhaps, usually the more modern thrillers, um, even the romances that don't require outlandish characters or voices. And they are perfectly yeah. ordinary people. And not unlike in commercial scripts, we're looking for a much more conversational read, a much more uh, up to date, perfectly ordinary conversation between two people uh, that you might hear at a coffee shop or on a bus, or and so we're again we're having to temper the uh, excitement, perhaps uh, depending on the scene that's been written, really. And what if there are a lot of people that all are reasonably similar in your books? So I'm a particular fan of attitude. So you know you get archetypes. So 
um, you know, teenage girls as opposed to middle-aged men. And then even within middle-aged men, you'll get the the snarky uncle or the, uh, you know, creepy guy that nobody likes. The reason we read the book from start to finish is that often at the beginning, the creepy guy that nobody likes ends up being the hero. Yeah, so you can't yeah. give him a horrible voice mm -hmm. because although we thought he was horrid, yeah. it turns out he's got a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that arc of that story is really important to represent. But the... Uh, I often get, you know, five Russian truckers in a bar having a fight yeah. um, or five teenage girls. It comes girls. up a lot, that one, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> it, it does seem to. And again, it's not sort of representative of the arc of the story, but it's a moment yeah. in the story where the heroine might have walked in, these five truckers are there, and suddenly the hero comes in and saves the day. And so the argument between the truckers is in this particular scene, and then you'll never see these people again. Mm. Nevertheless, right, yeah. they all have backstory. So these five truckers come from very different families. Some of them might be married, some might not. Some might have children, some might not. But attitude-wise, and my favorite example of this is teenage girls. You'll often get, particularly in the romance uh, books, teenage girls having fights or having conversations with each other where all you get is lines of dialogue. And sometimes mm. it's actually quite hard to work out who's saying which who's line. Speaking, yeah. So yeah. you have to assign those lines to a particular person. Wow. And actually particularly with teenage girl groups, there is always a leader. There's always the sycophant. There's always the girl who shouldn't really be in the group but is grateful to be there. There's the girl who, um, you know, thinks the group is about her but actually she isn't the leader. And those mm. attitudes and um, interpersonal relations change how people speak. So even mm. without giving them accents, some of them are quieter, some are louder, some do the interrupting, some only say one or two words because nobody really listens to them. And, the, and again, the author has given you that information in the length of their sentences, in the kinds of words they use, in um, the, you know, she demanded or she said quietly. You know, all of those things are giving you clues as to that person's personality. It's a fascinating insight into how to approach an audiobook. Anna, uh, we're out of time, but thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of our festive episode. <laughs> all of your details will be in the show notes. It's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you Aww. so much. And of course, we will also be putting both of today's scripts in the show notes so you can have a little read yourselves. You can indeed. Well, that's it almost for this year, of course. Just time to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy <laughs> Holidays as well. Yes, absolutely, which will sound a little strange if you're listening to this particular episode outside of the festive season. <laughs> but don't worry, because a voiceover script is for life, not just for Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Santa, come out and say Merry Christmas. Oh, ho, ho, Merry <laughs> Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays to you. Come on, Rudolph. <laughs> How do you say that? that? 